primary objective of Apollo 11 was to complete a national goal set by President John F. Kennedy on May 25, 1961, perform a crewed lunar landing and return to the Earth. Additional flight objectives included scientific exploration by the lunar module, deployment of a television camera to transmit signals to Earth, and deployment of a solar wind composition experiment and seismic experiment package. During the exploration, the two astronauts were to gather samples of lunar surface materials for return to Earth. They also were to extensively photograph the lunar terrain, the deployed scientific equipment, the lunar module spacecraft, and each other both with still and motion picture cameras. This was the last Apollo mission to fly a free return trajectory, which would enable a return to Earth with no engine firing, providing a ready abort of the mission at any time prior to lunar orbit insertion. On July 20, 1969, American astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first humans to ever land on the moon. About six and a half hours later, Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. As he took his first steps, Armstrong famously said, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong and Aldrin spent 21 hours 36 minutes on the moon's surface. After a rest period that included seven hours of sleep, the ascent stage engine fired at 124 hours and 22 minutes. It was shut down 435 seconds later when the Eagle reached an initial orbit of 11 by 55 miles above the Moon, and when Columbia was on its 25th revolution. As the ascent stage reached 125 hours and 19 minutes, the reaction control system fired to nearly circularize the Eagle orbit at about 56 miles, some 30 miles below and slightly behind Columbia. While most people accept this as fact, there are some people out there who believe that the Moon landing never happened. In Western Australia during the live broadcast of the Apollo 11 landing, several people saw a very unusual occurrence. One viewer, Una Ronald, watched the telecast and was astonished with what she saw. The residents of Honeysuckle Creek, Australia actually saw a different broadcast to the rest of the world. Just shortly before Armstrong stepped onto the moon's surface, a change could be seen where the picture goes from a stark black to a brighter picture. Honeysuckle Creek stayed with the picture and although the voice transmissions were broadcast from Goldstone, the actual film footage was broadcast from Australia. As Una watched Armstrong walking on the surface of the moon, she spotted a coke bottle that was kicked in the right-hand side of the picture. This was in the early hours of the morning and she phoned her friends to see if they'd seen the same thing. Unfortunately, they'd missed it but were going to watch the rebroadcast the next day. Needless to say, the footage had been edited and the coke bottle had been cut out of the film. But several other viewers had seen the coke bottle and many articles appeared in the West Australian newspaper. I'm sorry, it's a bit of a mess around here. Do you really believe they would have sent Neil Armstrong to another world would have never been before, would have sent them and filmed it live, not knowing what's going to happen at any point? What if they'd fell over and their uh, rock pierced the suit? What would the public have said? Well, we're not going to support this no more. There wouldn't have been no NASA left, would there? Because nobody would have supported their little regime. First thing I would have done, and what any logical person would have done when you're coming down the ladder on the moon, the first thing you would have thought they would have looked up at the Earth or wherever it was and pointed, and at least waved. I know nobody's going to see you, but you would have waved. It's a natural thing to do. Don't just go on there and jump about and act like silly fools, and it's all done in slow motion. It's like a couple of scenes on there where they're knocking something in the surface of the moon and you can hear a clunk, clunk, clunk and yet there's no sound in space. So anyway, you question that, don't you? And then you wait for them to give you an answer. They turn around and tell you it's because it travelled through the suit. The noise went up the suit, came out the microphone. Fair enough, okay, yeah. Well, that's answered that question, but then you say, you see another clip where the same astronaut has got something in his hand, he's thrown it, it sit against some of a metal, metal object there, and you can hear a clunk, a noise. So then you say to yourself, well, what's your excuse now? It's left his hand, and it's still here in a clunk. I can't go through his microphone, can it? Do you really believe what they're telling you? Because if you do, I'm afraid you need some help. We are running up against an issue with the Van Allen belt. The Van Allen belts are these radiation belts that kind of 
exists here. It's radiation, and it would tear up the human body. NASA was having a really hard time trying to figure out how to safely send someone through the Van Allen belts. Russia knew that we didn't, but couldn't say, you guys don't know how to get people through the Van Allen belts, and we know because we don't either. Russia, quietly failing to send people through the Van Allen belts, had killed a number of people. Gus Grissom was one of the original astronauts on the Apollo mission. He was originally going to be the first man on the moon. There's a conspiracy theory that NASA murdered Gus Grissom. He was publicly critical of NASA's success and ability to reach the moon. They needed him quiet. Right there, 1967, Gus Grissom died. They failed Apollo 1 mission in which Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee died in a fire before launch. There are a lot of discrepancies based on the footage of the moon landing. And a lot of those I don't necessarily believe are good, hard arguments. What can't be explained away is the crosshairs on the photos. In the images of the NASA moon landing, these are photos that NASA took and released. There are moments where the crosshairs, which are fixed to the camera, actually lie behind equipment. The theory is, that the only way that the crosshairs would be behind a piece of equipment in a photo would be if the piece of equipment was superimposed. This happens on a couple of occasions in the NASA photos, and to me, I don't know how you get around it. Say this is the photo of the moon. We got the rocks and the moon here. Let's say the sun is over here, right? Well, we got shadows naturally this way, but in some occasions, there are shadows competing. This would suggest another light source over here, sending the shadow this way. If you're on the moon, there wouldn't be two light sources. There would only be the one, the sun. The lack of artifacts. The easiest way to prove that we've been to the moon is to show people the things on the moon. However, everyone insists we don't have telescopes big enough to see the shit we put on the moon. The going argument is that to be visible from our best telescopes, something would have to be a little bit larger than a small house. That's nuts. A lot of people suggest that the footage is just slowed down half speed. We shot it in a Hollywood studio, jumped around, drove a lunar lander around sand, and then just cut it by half the speed. You take the actual footage from the moon landing, you do double speed, it looks almost exactly like a normal car driving around on a beach. Really very interesting. Look into it.